And welcome to my podcast today. I don't know if you all recognize my guest, Rob Carpenter, but I am super overjoyed today to have Rob on my show. Rob, thank you for joining me today. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Yeah, you bet. Why don't you tell the listeners who are out there that may not know you who you are and what you do and what you're passionate about? So what I do is I consult uh, primarily for for risk control, go around to different insurance companies, captives, work for different law firms, and I assess risk programs, especially DOT. So I specialize in DOT compliance and um, change in driver behavior, et cetera, basically to help mitigate loss, risk, money. Mm-hmm. So um, that that's really what I do. Um, most people would tell you that I'm really passionate about it, but I don't know that I'm really passionate about it as, or as passionate as most people think. Um, if we're getting down to the nuts and bolts, really, my family time is probably, you know, that's really where my passion is. Um, besides that, you know, I do a little genealogical research. But that's it. I'm just, just, the, just a nerd at heart. Oh, I love it. I love that. So you're not passionate. The reason why I saw Rob and I thought he was passionate about safety is because if you've all seen Rob's LinkedIn, he shows all sorts of horrific uh, accidents and it really gets your attention. And Rob, do you know what the first step of learning is? What? Attention. You got it to get your attention. You're exactly right. So when you talk about learning, why don't you tell the audience really what inspires you to learn or where does that come from? Because it seems when I talk to you, you really have a spark and an interest for learning. I think it comes from different places. And, um, you know, one of the things I do like about DOT is you're not just stuck in one rut every day. And I think that's one of the things I like coming from and coming from a truck driver, you know, position is you're not always going to the same shipper every day. You're seeing something different all the time. So you never really get into that mundane environment where you can become complacent and wreck Uh, do something Mm. stupid. But at the end of the day, um, a lot of it's curiosity. And, you know, for what I do with DOT, you're involved with so many different things. So whether it's vehicles and fleet and insurance and claims and crashes and drugs and alcohol and hiring. So there's so much for you to be involved in that not one day is going to, you know, mirror the next. And uh, that's one of the things I like about that part of it. but from a learning aspect, I just I just find myself to be curious about everything. Yeah. And it's, it's been like that pretty much my whole life. So, mm-hmm. you know, you, something piques your interest, something grabs your attention and you you go learn about it. And, you know, in, in 2023, it's an it's an amazing time to be alive if you're like that, because there's so much information out there. So, yeah, that's excellent. So curiosity. So do you think where do you think that curiosity came from? Uh, well, some of it is, you know, some there's, I mean, I could be walking down the street like yesterday I was walking to get my mail and my neighbors asked, Hey, what's going on with the goat? And he says, Oh, she's having her babies tomorrow. Goat babies. Oh and, my goodness. Rob, you're gonna have to post pictures of those goat babies. I'll do it. That'll be my next LinkedIn post. Um, awesome. but anyway, you know, you come home and I spend an hour or two looking at what, you know, what's the deal with goat babies, you know, you know, just learning more about goats. So it's, Sometimes it's the curiosity thing, but I think sometimes, you know, I came from a not so great background as, as a young kid. Uh, my grandparents got me when I was three going on four years old. So there was a lot that, a lot that I was told in terms of my personal value and, you know, what I would or wouldn't be when I got older and um, what I would amount to or not amount to. So part of that kind of, kind of intrigues you to say, or it motivates you to say, I don't want to be that way. You know, even at three or four years old, you know, hearing those types of things, you want to basically grow and and be as intelligent as you possibly can. So there's a lot of people who tap me and ask me different questions about all kinds of different things, especially now on LinkedIn, I probably get 10 questions (laughs) a day. And I answer every single one of them if I know the answer. And if I don't, I tell them, hey, give me a day, I'll research it and find out. But, you know, it's just, um, you know, you want to better, you want to better your personal and professional life. I mean, you, you can't ever know too much. Yeah, that's excellent. You know, one thing that you mentioned was as a young child, really having this drive. And I wrote an article about that. And to me, it's about situating your mind in a way that you think you can, and you can overcome those obstacles in your life. And so 
that's outstanding um, to be able to have that ability to reposition yourself in a way to make something better for yourself. So when you think about that, Rob, when you were young or even in, in your earlier careers of learning, what did engaging look learning look like for you? Or where does it what does it look like for you today from a perspective of today? I don't um I think when I was younger and I was in school, I think one of the things I I went to Hargrave Military Academy for high school because mm -hmm. I wasn't the best kid in middle school. It was school. So my, my grandmother was like, hey, look, we got to send you somewhere to get your mind focused on the right thing. So um, growing up, I think the cookie cutter approach is what actually killed it. That's not what made it engaging for me. That's what killed it, because mm -hmm. the generalized cookie cutter approach that everyone learns the same way isn't 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 an accurate way to look at it. So. What I did find is when I was introduced to the structure of a Marine Corps run uh, military school was that structure. And then, you know, the military thing prompting even more intrigue and other things and more curiosity. It's something that's going to get your attention and make you interested in learning something. It's mm -hmm. to sit someone in a class all day where you have no practical engagement in anything and just listen. It's it can be mundane then you, you just don't learn anything. So mm -hmm. I think when you, you had asked me, I, I think in a question about authentic learning, you know, mm -hmm. I, I don't think you can authentically learn anything unless you kind of have that engaging environment where you're going to have both the theory piece. I think you need some of that, but I think to have say 36 hours of theory and then followed by two act two hours or an hour of practical, some people just don't learn that way. So you know, I found actually the, the most learning I've done is probably over 35. And that was when, you know, things really became, to, you know, everywhere, everywhere you went, you could find something to learn. And most of it's free. You know, if you want to learn almost anything, whether it's MIT or Harvard or Yale, everybody mm -hmm. has that stuff online. If you want to learn it, it's there. I like that. Yeah. So, Rob, when you think about all the stuff you can learn, what is one thing that was foundational that really you think, man, that really meant a lot to me from a learning standpoint? What was it? Do you think that maybe something you love that you learn and how you learned how you learned about it? I think um, it's hard for me to pick one. I mean, I, I'm I, sure. <laughs> I, I've done so many different things in terms of educational pieces, but I would say it was more personal development from the military school aspect. It was, um, they taught, it was definitely practical. Um, you definitely were going to, to figure it out, um, not from a theory perspective, but from a doing perspective, whether that was running every morning at four o'clock. Um, Whoa, you know, running, oh, yeah. 4 a.m.? We Jeez. had this guy, Colonel Ripley. He, uh, <laughs> he, he ended the Vietnam War. So big time, okay. buried at Naval Academy. So he was running the school at the time. And he brought all these force recon Marines with him to be tactical officers when he became president of Hargrave. And it was a disaster for everybody because this guy was in his sixties and he would just come down the hall, beating on the doors, get up, uh -oh. the run. So I wouldn't do well with that. Mm -mm. No, it was tough, but, and I'm not, I, up until that point, I had never been challenged in a way like that from, a, from both a physical and mental aspect. And uh, I think that really instilled discipline and, other things like that that was fundamental for me in terms of future learning so i'm not going to start an educational process and then not finish it you know it's that was probably the biggest fundamental piece for me is having that feed into you so that's all awesome. yeah no kidding getting up at 4 a.m and kind of getting out on the, on I, the road there that that's right there is a learning experience but it you know it's what sticks right and, and i'm in my forties now and every morning, whether it's Saturday, Sunday, Tuesday, or Thursday, I'm still getting up at four o'clock. Okay. So I might not be running. Are you running? I was going to say, you got to get on Strava. We can follow each other. No, on Strava. My, my knees oh. couldn't do it. But uh, <laughs> so no, I think that's probably fundamentally what kind of changed a lot for me. I got it. So when you think about that and you can either you like think about an example in your own life. And I know you impact thousands and thousands of people through your social media and just your touch and outreach to drivers and, and just people in general, you have, you've made a big difference. Um, is there something that you can point to that maybe you think that you've helped somebody overcome the impossible? 
in my article, I wrote about, you know, there's times in your life, there may be times that are so challenging that you think that maybe there's, you know, you can't get out of those times, but maybe there was something that you overcame or you helped someone overcame the impossible that really meant a lot to them or to you. Um, actually, I'm, I, I think what I do that does the most good has nothing to do with, you know, you, we might, we might lead some people out of, out of, uh, unsafe environments and practices mm -hmm. and into, into being safer every day, uh, which prevents injuries and deaths. But, you know, that's a good thing. But for me, I, I'm on the York because and sheriff's office board here in Yorktown. And, uh, one of the things that I've always done is when, um, working with people who get out of jail, no one wants to work with people who get out of jail. And some of these people are so desperate to get out of this, mm -hmm. this iron curtain that they've fought, you know, found themselves in. So one of the things that I found is when they get out, they don't have a license. So a lot of times I'll teach them driver improvement so they can go to court, take that certificate, get their license back. But one of the things that I really beat into these people is get your CDL. I will help you get your CDL. I'll show you how to do that, even with the new entry requirements. <laughs> but, um, you know, that opens a door for a lot of these guys. And you can watch somebody go from, you know, making 28 cent an hour working on a prison farm for five, 10 or 12 years wow. with no prospect of doing anything different in the future. You're looking at total recidiv, you know, basically going back Ooh. recidivism. But, you know, you get them in that CDL and you, yeah. you kind of give them some hope and, you know, give them a door that opens to, to a whole world of stuff, um, which I've, I've found out personally in, you know, their, wow. their lives lighten up. So And life change. I mean, their yeah. lives completely change. You help them change their life. And somebody in that situation, I can imagine you have that experience. How do you work with them? Do you work with them to really help them overcome their thinking that they can't do it? Like, is there anything that you so say to them? Mm -hmm. Yeah, some of it's value driven. I, I think that uh, my I didn't come from from great parents. Um, and I think some of that I had that rapport because a lot of people know who my dad was and um, what he was involved in and where I came from with him. And um, so I can I can instill some influence in, in some of those circles, even though I'm not that guy. Um, mm -hmm. I know them as that guy because they're, they're not my father, but they're, you know, kind of an image of him. Mm -hmm. So if you can, if you can kind of get in there and get their attention mm -hmm. and influence them to say, Hey, you can get past this. If you really want to do it, this is the route you have to take. Uh, but you have to put all that behind you. And this is the route, this is the route to some, to some personal and professional freedom. Wow. That's, that's amazing. And I'm sure, I mean, you see this all the time. I mean, people that feel that they have no hope, they have nowhere to go and they can look to you for that foundational thinking. So if there's somebody out there today, Rob, that's listening to this, that you feel that they feel that they've lost hope, maybe their passion to learn. You have such a curiosity to learn. You were telling me earlier about potatoes and learning yeah. about potatoes and things. So you and I could talk forever about lots of stuff to learn. But if there's somebody out there that really has lost their hope or passion, what would you say to them? What would, would be something you might say? I'm not a highly emotional person and my wife hates it about me because it's like, <laughs> hey, you know, the world could be falling apart and you're, you know, instead of comforting somebody, it's usually like, hey, you just need to get up and go get it done. Mm -hmm. And uh, my kids are just looking at me like, but my legs broke. I'm like, you just need to get up, walk it off. And um, it's not that bad. But <laughs> a lot of times, you know, you just need to tell them, hey, you know, I understand what you're going through. But if you sit there and waller in it, it's not going to get any softer. So, you know, let's let's get it together and get on the right path and, and make it happen. So, I mean, there's a motivational aspect. I love David Goggins. I just uh -huh. want to, you know, because that's just him. And you know, my wife is like, he's you, but skinnier. And, <laughs> but I really believe that if you get up, you can make it happen. And, and in 2023, like I said, everything is at your fingertips. And um, there's so many programs now. If it's if it's a financial barrier, there's so many programs there from workforce grants and um, unemployment things that can kind of finance that for you. And then there's the free stuff. So there's no, really no reason you can't get out of whatever rut you have happened to got yourself in somebody put you in. 
Right, exactly. That's awesome advice, Rob. Thank you so much for that. I really appreciate you and everything that you're doing to help people who maybe you know, don't have the, all the opportunity in the world. So I really enjoyed having you on my podcast today. Is there anything else that you'd like to share, or leave any lasting impressions with our audience today? I don't think so. Just go get it, ha go get it done and make it happen. All right. There's Rob Carpenter, everyone. If you want to connect with Rob, Rob, where can they find you? Uh, you can get on my website um, or obviously LinkedIn. That's probably where I have the most followers and, you know, so either awesome. one. Awesome. Well, thanks, Rob. We appreciated having you on and we'll see you on LinkedIn. Yep. Thank you, ma'am.